Gentlemen, let's broaden our minds. Lawrence. As of right now, we are just, oh, well, I should have looked it up but before now, but we are about 60-ish, 58-ish days away from the greatest gladiator match in history, Batman v Superman, coming up pretty soon, and with it, our second, the second part of our Batman retrospective. How we doing, fellas? Batman. You didn't even watch the show. Shut your mouth. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, alone. Every year at my house, we hung up a stocking for me, my sister, and Adam West. So you don't even understand. Did you really? No. I wish I'd. That's what I'm going to do. That'd I'm be up. awesome. Yeah. Adam West is like the greatest human. Yeah. What if, you, what if one morning you woke up on Christmas morning and Adam West was on your couch? I would say it's about time. You're really <laughs> old. Are you okay? Why are you here? Or I'll be like, oh, you finally got my emails or something. <laughs> He looked like 90 years old in 1989. What's he look like now? Uh, I, looks I, like, I, I wouldn't do same. it. I wouldn't look it up. He looks a little bit like Roger Moore. You know, James Bond back in the 70s. That's, mm-hmm. just, that's strange. But... Shoot him up. Let's have him be 007. <laughs> Adam West is 007. I'd buy that. It would literally kill him. <laughs> it might. Yeah, for now, he's just going to stick to being the best character on Family Guy. <laughs> just Adam West is the mayor. That's so funny. <laughs> That show's underrated. I don't know if we covered that at one point. I was Family Guy underrated? No, it's not underrated. It's not underrated. It's one of the like most popular. No, no, no. I'm seeing recently because everybody's like, "Oh, Family Guy sucks." But I was, I, I'm like I said, I'm probably mentioned this before, but I was watching some episodes and I laughed really hard at some stuff. They are, oh, it's okay now, I guess. It's good. It's they have good jokes every once in a while. It's not yeah. as consistent as American Dad. No, their their meta ways are <laughs> their meta ways. Their meta-ways. cutaways are getting really meta like recently. <laughs> Did you see where I was going there? From meta ways. Yeah, the, like a lot that. of good meta ways. I'm uh, like a season and a half behind. So. You actually, you actually catch up with Family Guy. When it's I mean, on Netflix. Not, yeah, when it's on Netflix, I just watch it. It's on Netflix. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. It's been on Netflix for like four years. Well, it's been a while. <laughs> like I said, guys, I just recently had an internet connection stably where I slept. So this is this is this whole world is new to me. Honestly. <laughs> ah, gosh. But anyways, uh, yeah, we're gonna be, ah man, our last, our last Batman discussion before Batman v Superman. I could talk about Batman all day. All sure, day. it'll come up all year. Well, of course, but uh, still, we uh, we have to. I have to remind. Him, we got to cover. We got to talk about who the best Batman is towards the end, just to kind of oh, set the boy. record straight. At least so far. I know Josh is raising his flag a little bit too early, but we'll get into that. that like 100%. Hasn't even seen the movie. <laughs> but until we get into there, let's talk about uh, Christopher Nolan's Batman trilogy. Back to Gotham we go. Or Chicago or Pittsburgh, I don't know. Whatever. Whatever one it was shot in. It was shot in all of them, none of them. I don't know. <laughs> they got a lot of stuff to do. I've always wanted to go to Chicago and like, oh, I wonder if they do a sightseeing of like places from the Dark Knight in, in Chicago. Probably not. I would totally... T- business idea. I would totally go to that. But <laughs> all right. Christopher Nolan. <laughs> He's just there to, like, break your dreams about how we, they did all the stunts. Be like, oh, yeah, that's... We just kind of... I don't know. Flipped a tractor trailer here. Yeah. It, we just yes. we just stuck a big pin underneath it and just kind of pushed it. Whatever. It was... Uh. <laughs> He's got the most boring speaking voice ever. But... <laughs> all right. Let's talk about some more Batman. So, Batman Begins came out about eight years after Joel Schumacher uh, gave his wonderful contribution to the canon uh, of the film series, at least. He ruined everything. Yeah, or as Josh would say, because he is no fun. 
But uh, actually, I want to I want to hear about from you, Josh. So this is right about in our wheelhouse, right? Like this was t- so 2005. I was 10 years old. You guys were pretty much close in the same age. How do you remember coming across this movie, Josh? Let's start with you. Um, the first time I saw it, I actually didn't see all of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw I was at a friend's house, and we like went downstairs, and his brother was watching it because it was I think around the time it was out on DVD or something. Um, or it was on TV or HBO or something like that. Um, and we just like, we watched like, I think like a few, like half an hour or so. And it was the scene we saw like, a, we, uh, around the scene where he first introduced himself as Batman, where he breaks in, where he's, um, busting up the, the, uh, gang for the first time. Introducing himself as Batman. Whatever. <laughs> Hi. Hey guys. I'm Batman. No, you mean the uh, best scene in the whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's the uh, first scene I remember, like, really, like, hitting me as, like, whoa, this is really cool. Um, because I was kind of, it wasn't, like, my first introduction to Batman, but it was, like, the first time I, re- like, Batman really stuck with me. Because before then, I really only, like, I saw, like, some, I seen, like, you know, not even the animated series that seemed like cartoons of some kind, and, like, you know, I've read a couple comics from Batman, but. I was like, I think like 10 years old when that movie came out or 11 or something like that. Hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, that's, I just remember seeing that little first uh, bit of the movie and I was like, whoa, this is cool. And then I guess like a few weeks or a few months later, I finally sat down and watched the whole thing. I was like, whoa, this is cool. So yeah. yeah. Cody, what about you? How do you? Um, I remember. I, I'd always liked Batman. I don't yeah. know if I made that clear. Last time we both did, I think, but, to uh, Josh's detriment. <laughs> I remember just one day it was warm out. It was after the movie came out in theaters, and me and my dad were hanging out in my pool. <laughs> he goes, "Hey, let's go see the new Batman movie." I'm like, "Cool, <laughs> sure, <laughs> let's go. See you then." And then we watched it, and it was great. Mm. And it was Batman. It was so cool. I didn't know at the time how great of a movie it was. Yeah, yeah. But I did enjoy it. It was fun. Um, the reason I asked this is because I had I have such a strange relationship with Batman Begins because as much as I loved just Batman in general, like by the time I was ten I was just head over heels, like Batman. I've got you know I've got a blanket right next to me as we speak with Batman on it, so um <laughs> it's really comfortable too. But I had no idea this movie existed until I was like watching TV and flipping through pay per view to get to like a baseball game, and I saw Batman Begins. I'm like, what? What's this? <laughs> and I was like, Mom, is this Batman? She's like, Yeah, it's probably. That's what it can says. You, can you say what like that again? <laughs> what? It's like Tim Allen. I don't know. <laughs> no, your mom. I hope that's what your mom actually said. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, probably, but like, it's what it, that's hilarious. <laughs> But I, got, I watched the movie, like, in the... I got it on pay-per-view, like, immediately, and I just watched it in the middle of the day. Like, and I don't... And just some weird thing about me, I never watch a movie in daylight. It's, for some reason, I cannot watch... It's really hard to me, for me to watch a movie when it's not... When it's, like... Really? There's the sun. I don't know, it's weird. Unless it's, like, a sunny kind of movie, you know? Does that <laughs> include in the movie theater, or is that just, um... No, no, that's why, like, I when I watch a movie not at the movie theater, I always want to recreate being in a movie theater, so I like it to be dark, so I can just oh, focus on the screen. I like that, too, but I mean, yeah. I mean if it's 2 in the afternoon, I'm, I can't, like, throw the sun out the, out the window. I know, but I just do something else until it's nighttime. That's why I hate summer, it's because it gets dark so late. But anyways, on to the club. <laughs> I'm Join weird... the club, buddy. Um, so, yeah, I just kind of watch this, and I'm just like, okay, cool. It It exists, it's not... It's not as fun as my as the other one, but hey, whatever. Please note you were ten. Yeah, I don't. Well, I don't. I, Batman's Batman, but um. So I guess for that reason, we'll we'll get into this a little bit. But I've just never really connected with this. I guess. You know, it's what? just I don't connect with it. You know, I like it. I definitely like it. But when I, you know, when I watched it, I just re we watched it last week, and I was just like, okay. You know, it is. It is what it is. But now nah, we'll we'll dig into that. I just wanted, to, I just wanted to hear about how we all got into this. So, so I guess some initial thoughts on Batman Begins. Josh, we'll start with you. 
This is the second best Batman movie ever made. It's one of the best superhero movies ever made. It's one of the best movies. One of my favorite movies of all time. It's amazing. Batman Begins is freaking incredible, and I love it every, <laughs> more every single time I watch it. I just watched it a few days ago, and it blew my mind again for like the millionth time. Batman Begins is amazing. So, yeah. Wow. Strong statement there. Cody. Same. I, I like Batman. I like this movie a lot. Mm-hmm. Liam Neeson is awesome in this movie. Everybody is awesome in this movie. But special shout out to Liam Neeson. Yeah. <laughs> he is awesome. He really is. Um, so, yeah, I guess I, I touched upon it just a second ago. This is a perfectly good movie. No, there's nothing. The only things wrong with it are just, like, stupid nitpicky things that I'll, I guess I'll get into in just a minute here. But, like I said, I just don't. It just doesn't hit with me, you know? I, I don't guess, know. I guess because... Uh, I don't understand what you're saying. Okay, well, I guess... So, all of, like, my two my two or three favorite Batman movies, I guess, spoiler alert, obviously, but Dark Knight, Batman, and then, I guess, Mask of the Phantasm as a stand-in I, for the animated series. I just I saw you're... those when I was so young, and they just, like, they kind of started something. I don't know if they started something, but they just... <laughs> they connected with me a little bit more, like, emotionally, I suppose, uh-huh. that... Even though this is very, very, very good, I just don't have that same kind of heart feelings for it, you know? I thought you were going to say Batman Forever for your third favorite, and I was going to scream. Thank God you didn't. No, no, that's that's my fourth favorite. Um, <laughs> it's actually a little bit, but... No, do you, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess yeah. so. It's just, no, it's just... I guess I don't have the nostalgia for it that I do for other things. I just... I saw it in, like, a weird time between being a little kid and then being like a young teenager who was impressionable and was getting into movies and stuff like that. So it's, it's perfectly fine. It's a very good movie. Just not one of my favorites. It's good. You know, it's good, but so yeah, uh, likes and dislikes. Let's, uh, let's talk about it. Cody, what are some, what are some likes? Um, the tone, mm-hmm. the acting, the music, <clears throat> the visuals, the, one-liners even though they're not one-liners they're just really well it's such a well-written movie Mm -hmm. is it fair to say i like everything about this movie absolutely of course that's i like it i like pretty much everything about this movie Mm -hmm. there are a couple of little things i don't particularly care for but yeah other than that it's just the perfect way to start this um yeah series off i absolutely agree with you so that's exactly what these movies needed, mm-hmm. and I'm happy that it happened. Josh, some main likes and dislikes? Uh, uh, I mean, the cast. Um, it's easily the best cast assembled for, I think, probably just any superhero movie in general. One, honestly, just movies. It's, it's, it's one of the best like ensembles. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Ocean's Eleven. Come on. Come on. Meh. Come on. Hard pass. Meh. Oh, um, what? Savage. Um, Ocean's Eleven? Are you kidding me? I'm kidding. I've never seen it. What? That's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> That's a magical I haven't seen film. it either. Oh, God. Looks cool, uh, I guess. Anyway, next thing we uh, know on our schedule, we're going to have to do an episode on Ocean's Eleven because neither of us have ever seen it. Eleven and Thirteen. Not Twelve. Just to, Twelve just, sucks. To, just to clarify, I said one of the best cast, not the best cast. Oh my gosh! Um, wow. But yeah, this is, I think this is all. I mean, really, just the whole trilogy is like one of the best like group of actors ever put like together in a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, Christian especially, Bale, especially Katie Holmes, right? We'll get to, oh yeah, we'll get, we'll get to her later. Um, she looks but, fourteen. It's weird. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> um, Christian Bale is Batman. And Bruce Wayne, friggin' incredible. I love him as he is everything I want to see in Batman. He is brutal. He is menacing. He is uh, just. He's this. You know the creature of the night. He's uh, he's terrifying. I, I love him as Batman. He's everything I want to see um, as Batman on screen. Bruce Wayne. He does an awesome job. Also, he's really he brings that kind of kind of um, you know alternative persona to the role. You know the suave. You know cocky. You know not jackass, but he's a jackass. Oh yeah, he yeah, absolutely kidding is. me? Okay. Yeah, let's go. I just want to thank everyone for coming and drinking my booze. Uh, yeah. Swimming in the pool. Come on. <laughs> you oh, see, please. I'm buying this place. Like, come <laughs> I'm on. buying this hotel. We're gonna set a new rule about the uh, pool area. Yeah. But uh, don't ask me how I know the movie's dialogue by heart. Just shut up. It's great. It's a yeah. great movie. 
Um, but yeah, the cat Christian Bale is great. Um, Actually, I, can we pause one second real quick? Because yeah. I got the list of pos- possible Batmans right in front of me, and you know this is kind of interesting. Uh, so other than Christian Bale, they had looked at uh, Eon Bailey, who apparently is. is a human being. <laughs> News to me. Uh, Henry Cavill, obviously. Yeah, I heard about that. Billy Crudup, which is pretty cool. Do you guys Who's like that? him? I don't Who's even know that? who that is. He was in Spotlight. He played the lawyer. He oh, played okay. uh, the the lawyer the, that like the jerk lawyer. Guy? Yeah, the jerk lawyer who turned out to be a, like a cool lawyer. Uh huh. I guess. Okay, I can yeah, see that. That one's alright. Uh, Hugh Dancy, who is in, I think Masters of Sex right now. No, he was in Hannibal. He played Will Graham. I knew more than that. I didn't watch that. Uh, he was in. Okay, let's look at movies. Uh, Legends of Oz, Dorothy's Return. Okay. No, he was in. He literally wasn't in anything except okay. actually he was in Black Hawk Down as his first movie. But that talk about ensemble cast. Yeah. Before uh, they were famous. Yeah. Joshua Jackson, the youngest Jackson brother. Uh, the youngest member of the Jackson 5. <laughs> no, he's not. Uh, Where's Michael? <laughs> the other one. Uh, oh. Heath Ledger. Dave, wow. David Boreans from Bones, an ethical oh, college alum. That'd be awful. Yeah, that would be bad. And Killian Murphy, of course. Scarecrow? And Jake Gyllenhaal, is who made it to the final cuts along with... Um, Christian Bale. I would I would have loved to I would love to go in an alternate universe where Jake Gyllenhaal played back. Yeah, same. To be I think he'd be great. Yeah, Josh, what do you think? Jake Gyllenhaal of of that list. If if you know if Christian Bale got hit by a meteor and couldn't do it, if he went to Russia and got hit by a meteor, who would you <laughs> yeah. of that list? Who do you who are you excited about? Jake Gyllenhaal, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a very different world. But anyways, sorry to cut you off earlier. I just wanted yeah, to get yeah. that in there. So you were saying. The cast. Um, so mm-hmm. there's also um, uh, uh, Michael Caine, oh. Alfred, amazing best, best Alfred, Alfred. probably best Alfred that will ever be. Maybe Jeremy Irons at the top, but was it? Well, Michael Goff. I don't know. Good. Did you guys watch um, uh, Gotham at all? No. Yes. The sh- oh. That, that Alfred in that, he's like such a sassy little dick to Bruce. It's hilarious. <laughs> As a character, he's awesome. He's so good. Uh, Bruce is like he's standing on the roof. In one, I think it's like the first episode. I never got past like the fourth episode of that show. Yeah. Um, he's standing on the roof about to like he's putting one arm, uh, one hand or fucking leg <laughs> off. Sorry. Uh, and he's, um, you know, trying to feel fear and thrill. And Alfred just comes up, what do you think you're doing, you little prick? Come on, get off. <laughs> he like pulls him by his ear off of the ledge. It's great. He's awesome. That's funny. But, nice. you know, Michael Caine is awesome, especially yeah. in Rises. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then uh, also, you mean, Liam Neeson, Morgan Freeman, uh, we got Cillian Murphy as Scarecrow. It's, it's Killian. Incredible. Killian Murphy. Cillian, Cillian, it's both. I don't know. I, I've always called him Cillian. C. Murphy is what I'm going to call him. Yeah, C. Murphy. C. Murphy. C. Murphy. C. Murphy. C. Murphy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, the movie's got a stacked cast. Um, mm. It's really just everyone does a great job. Uh, Katie Holmes is in it too. Um, <laughs> she's, yeah, she's, she's just there. Just an great cast, freaking one of the best casts ever. Uh, you oh, know, Katie, Katie Holmes is in it. Uh, but um, yeah, Cox. Is I mean, that I, is that I'll, one of your guys like negatives? I'll, I'll yes. get. It's, it's not that she's bad. I'll get to her in a minute. Is she's she, she's she's fine. She's so, hella out of place though. She, that yeah. Hella's uh, back by the way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's no, it's We're trying to not be explicit, even yeah. after I just cursed. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it's well, for. But yeah, some other things uh, I love about this movie. Uh, I mean, to me, it just it captured the core of Batman, like just what mm-hmm. Batman is, um, in like his world and his surrounding and what he's meant to be, um, in terms of like a presence. Um, and it did this. It, I mean, it was not. I guess not. Maybe it's not the first. But it kind of also is. I mean, it's the first super movie to kind of go for that more grounded in reality kind of tone. Um, and they really, I think they pulled it off in an incredible way. And they other got, other yeah. than Steel, just starring Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal. Um, I think that this is obviously the closest we'll ever get to a uh, live action interpretation of Year One. It is. It's, I mean, it is. Year one. Yeah, it really it's is. basically Year One. But... It's Year One from Batman's point of view. Yeah, yeah Josh, would you say it's um like percentage wise, what how much of year of uh, year one is this? I'd say at least seventy five to eighty percent. Yeah. Okay. Give it ninety. Mm-hmm. The only thing that's not from year one is Ra's Ghoul. Yeah. yeah. 
who was also poss- was considered to be played by Guy Pierce. Cool. Casting is nice. interesting, and he yeah. So, but instead we got Liam Neeson. So, what Nobody a downgrade, would. guys! Because one of those was going to have a big career. <laughs> <laughs> one, um, he did Batman Begins, and then uh, Guy Pierce got Iron Man three. So, the clear winner here. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah and then uh the directing no no nolan is just incredible oh he's and great christopher nolan is a freaking rock star right now mm-hmm. even though his last movie was a little bit of a letdown but anyway um who's christopher nolan oh talk about interstellar yeah bruh oh you're wrong but totally. whatever you do you josh yeah so it was a them, that third act was a clusterfuck, but you know, whatever. Oh, yeah. um, so, <laughs> I've got a list here. You gotta that bleep I that. Yeah, I'll, I'll just remove it. I'm moving along here. But, uh, I got a list here, <laughs> so some just notes that I jotted down while I was watching the movie. Um, the fight scenes. I th- this has kind of been said to death, but I'll just... They're not very good, but I attribute a lot of the, I guess, the faux pas in here to the fact that this is his Nolan's first big movie. And... Uh, f- for a first, you know, big movie, and this thing had a hundred fifty million dollar budget. Little things like that, or you, you're kind of willing to look over. Did that bother you at all? Now the fight scenes were done. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. The this... Oh really? Yeah, the, that's. I guess we'll just get to my negatives now because I, I have more positives. But I mean, okay. Um, I mean, one of my, I have two. I mean, one of them says Katie Holmes. She's out of place. She doesn't belong in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other one is the hand to hand fight scenes, and just the hand to hand ones. Not like any of the other action scenes, but. Just the fight, the one-on-one fight scenes. Um, yeah, the first time that they did it with uh, by the shipping containers, that totally worked because you know you no, kinda, I thought, I thought, you were rubbernecking to like get a look at Batman, and he's just like this dude in the shadows. You know what he looks like. So see, f- the first time they did it, they did it. That it looked awesome. But see, I, then... I didn't, I didn't think it looked good at all the first time. Oh really? No, I, th- I didn't think it. I think um, I mean the, the scene as a as a whole it had the the right effect on me. But yeah, yeah, no, that's just, what I'm talking about. Like but, for that scene, it was appropriate, but. After that, it was just like weird, you know. No, because I mean, just but still, in that scene, you it's oh, it's I think it's really over edited and really choppy. And I know it's the point of it is to kind of conceal Batman and kind of keep him hidden. But you can do that without making me, you know, give me a headache and making me, you know, I want to be able to see something. I want to be able to see action, not little mm-hmm. bits and pieces of. No, but that no, but that stuff. first appearance was they were playing into the fact that he's this just thing that's out there. So yeah, he, no, uh, I still need. Is I still it need true to what see they what... say about him? Can he f- really fly? I still need to see what's going. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, they were fine. So um, I also wanted to pay note that Christian Bale, as you were talking about a little bit before, the guy playing three, maybe four roles, if you really want to dig into yeah. it a little further. Definitely. You got Batman, uh, Bruce Wayne in Private, and then Bruce Wayne the Playboy. And I don't know about you, but. T- each one was super convincing to me. He played them. Yeah. He played all those roles great. Yeah. Um, Definitely. So wait, I want to let me ask you guys a philosophical question here. Who is the true person, Batman or Bruce Wayne? Batman. Batman. I say Bruce Wayne because without the heartache and you know all that kind of stuff, you don't have a Batman. That's yeah, that comes from here's Bruce the Wayne. Thing. He became Bruce. Batman the second his parents were killed. Yeah. Well, Bat- so Batman. He's been Batman for more of his life than he's been Bruce Wayne. Mm-hmm. That means more than just putting on the mask and the oh, cape. Stop. Yeah, here. His ideas. <laughs> He's an idea. An idea can't, can't be killed. Batman can be anybody. He can be anybody. Yeah. Really bad Batman. That's what, Not what I had in mind. <laughs> um. This isn't a guy. Which, Anyways. Um. Also, <laughs> I know we're not if, if you notice, I I noticed this in one of the scenes. This is like the weirdest thing ever. But, um, when after Bruce falls down the hole, and he's talking to his dad. He and his dad have, I I could go back, I'm going to go back and look at this just to be sure, but he they have the same dialogue about, you know, especially the scary ones when they were talking about the bats, as Mufasa and Simba did in The Lion King, so that was kind of cool. <laughs> and I also noticed that Man of Steel totally ripped off their use of flashback sequences during... Really? Yeah. You're telling me that uh, Man of Steel <laughs> is kind of a shot-for-shot remake of Batman Begins? I know, breaking news, guys. <laughs> Uh, da, da, da. yeah, editing's a little all over the place, and let me just say, this is me, I'm gonna come to the defense of movies like The Amazing Spider-Man 2, again, 
And just any movie that has a cliffhanger ending, because this had the biggest cliffhanger ending of all time, and nobody criticizes it for it, but if recent movies have cliffhanger endings, people nope. get pissy. The reason, the reason this works and The Amazing Spider-Man 2 doesn't is because half the movie is a cliffhanger. It's Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yeah, not, not Batman. Yeah. I'm just saying, but in general, the idea of having a cliffhanger ending where they set something up that's going to happen in the next movie, not nothing before that, just the last scene. Come on, guys. This no, is I don't I don't think people get upset about that today. About mo- about recent movies having cliffhangers? There's tons of them. I don't hear complaints about it. Oh, I do. But oh, okay. I guess we're in the di- different subreddits, but the <laughs> but that <laughs> that Joker card, that's just the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Oh gosh. Dude, Nolan, I heard Nolan say at one point that despite that ending, they did not, they were not set in stone that they were going to do the Joker. Like, how pissed would people be if they set up the Joker and then they do, like, I don't know, I guess, well, my my de facto Batman villain joke is Condiment King, so we'll say Condiment King. Do you guys no, know about what? him? No. I'm, what's his name, Condiment King? Condiment King, yeah. He's got, I like, have an idea of what he does. Yeah, he's got, like, mustard and ketchup sprayers that, like, are psychotrophic drugs or something like that. And he just sprays people with condiments. Awesome. Yeah. It was it was a joke given on <laughs> Batman the Animated Series, so whatever. But, uh, oh, yeah, so those are kind of my likes and dislikes and things I noticed. Josh, Cody, any any more stuff to add? Feel free. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, can I go? Yeah. yeah. Go uh, I, I know Josh had something to say. You could tell. Um, basically, I want to – not basically. I want to – give a shout out i don't know who it is whoever the cinematographer is on this movie is top notch wally fister my man top notch especially i mean i know we're not there yet but dark knight Mm -hmm. oh my god um Mm -hmm. is that the same guy yep okay oh he kills it in that movie but he did yeah um the only thing i have to say is a negative is and it's throughout all and this is batman voice i really it's a bit much yeah like compared to kevin conroy in his Bruce Wayne Batman voice, it's kind of excessive. <laughs> that was a, it. Was an interesting decision, Josh. What do you think about the voice? Oh, I love it. It's my favorite Batman voice. You really? Yep. I think it's better than Conroy. Uh, yeah. Oh wow, that's not right. No, you're wrong there. You're wrong. I'm you're sorry. really. I'm sorry, Josh. Everybody has an opinion, but you are wrong. You no, are really, better. really wrong. Be- Kevin Conroy. I love. He's awesome as Batman. He has a great. He's my second favorite Batman voice. He has a very deep, very pa- powerful. Very uh, menacing voice, very fitting for that Batman, for this Batman, and the way it works, it works. It, it's it blows it blows it away for me. Okay, I love, that's I love... better. That's better. But saying that Bale has a better overall, just like voice, voice than Conroy is ridiculous. I'm sorry. Like in ter- in terms of like if you're comparing Batman Conroy's voice for his Batman to uh, Bale's voice for his Batman, who does a better job at you know delivering for their distinct batman i think i'd go with bail just that's just me personally mm, well it is yeah <laughs> but you know i'm just saying kevin conroy makes christian bale sound like peewee herman to me so <laughs> but whatever i love <laughs> <laughs> i'm imagining peewee herman as batman <laughs> <laughs> that'd be strange oh, oh batman ha ha the tricky nice uh, so any more stuff on? Oh wait, I do have one more thing. Uh, I don't. I guess they fixed this. A lot of the problems I have with this movie were fixed in the sequel, so they're kind of like meh. And since they all moved together, I kind of count that as you know, I don't care about it as much. But uh, they did a little bit too much set work. Like there's, I hate to say there was too many sets, but there were too many sets. Like they didn't. It, a lot of this movie didn't really feel like Gotham as much as it was a part of a set. You know. Like, I like how in Dark Knight, especially, that they got out into the city. You know, this one just feels a little bit more claustrophobic, I guess. Does that make sense? Basically, what you're saying is there were enough helicopter shots of the city. <laughs> no, no, there were too much, because it would be giant oh, helicopter really? shots, and then everything else would be, well, and then like... then just be inside a warehouse. Yeah, interiors in a warehouse. And oh, that just, okay, I, I get what you're saying. Though. Yeah, that just got a little bit tiring. I'm like, okay, go onto a street and fight some dudes. Like, they did, they did do some stuff, but it just... It was too, there were too many sets, I think, but whatever. Sorry. That's just a personal preference, but it doesn't do anything to the story or anything like that. One more point to make. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you can criticize this movie all you want for its editing, mm-hmm. especially in its fight scenes, but it blows Quantum of Solace out of the water. <sighs> <laughs> <He> just... 
I thought you, you watched my... that movie. I thought recently. you were on my side, but no, not in Quantum of Solace. <laughs> that movie's awful. I like it. I still uh, like no, Spectre's fine, but yeah, no, I like I still like <laughs> Solace. But no, Quantum of Solace is so bad. It's so poorly edited. I don't. I don't look. You know, to be honest with you, I don't look for editing very often. I just only I just only said that because there was one there was like one scene where I'm like okay that's kind of clunky but I don't that, look I don't for it that. either but like I didn't even notice the fight scenes were bad in Batman Begins yeah but, like the, from the second Quantum of Solace starts mm-hmm. you can tell you're in for a bad time I just I don't know I've never seen that I'd love to watch that with like somebody who like a professional editor just to explain to me what's wrong with it I think watch, it, watch it with Armand White. God, I would. I'm gonna. I'll fill a sock full of coins and just beat him with it. <laughs> instead, how about that? But <laughs> um, sorry, I had to bust your balls a little bit. That's there. fine. I deserve it. I really do. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, anything else you guys want to talk about? Yeah, a up? couple little things. Okay. Um, I mean, just I mean, I said the action scenes. I, counting, not counting the you know more you know intimate like fist fights, um, like the chase scene with the tumbler. Mm-hmm. Is I, I love that scene so much. It's incredible. So I mean, good. and then I mean, just the Tumblr itself. It's my favorite Batmobile to date. Um, like, I mean, we haven't seen Affleck's Batmobile. I mean, look wise, that's probably my favorite. But this one, like, what we've seen and what it can do, that's my favorite by far. Um, but which one would you rather own? Like, what if you could buy a Batmobile? Which one do you want, including well, the new ones? Well, actually, uh, well, maybe actually, um, eighty nine. Yeah, I would go Tumblr first, or excuse, sorry, Bad Pod first. Yeah, that's that's what I was getting to. Like, I actually didn't mean uh, Tumblr is my favorite. I love it like as the car, but like my actual Bat, like if you're talking like all Bat Mobile, like the Bat Pod is my actual favorite. But the um, Tumblr you could play music in, so that'd be kind of cool. You can There's... play you can play music in the Bat Pod too, probably. You just got to use that um Cal- radio in your ears. Exactly. You just blast it. You just blast out the little speakers that are probably in there. <laughs> I, if I got if I was able to get a tumbler, I would like trick it out so it does that thing where like it, it like bounces around like hood cars do, you know? <laughs> they go into like the suicide doors, all those kind of things. That'd be cool. But all right, giant douchebags. <laughs> you put truck nuts on the back, <laughs> <laughs> which is the worst thing you can do with a car, or uh, the best thing. No, the worst. It's always no. the worst. I, no. I'll tell you a quick story. I was on vacation one time and I was walking with my family. I saw a car with truck nuts on it and I was like, I knelt down to take a picture and I was like making fun of the person oh, whose car it was and they walked over from behind <laughs> it and I just like, like, oh, no, nah, and I ran away. Do you laugh? Oh, I hope no, he No, he had a goatee and he looked mad. He, you know, like, <laughs> goatee and a tank top. He did not look Wearing a fedora. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Uh, Josh, anything else? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, the... Uh... Of the, the music, Hans Zimmer, and uh, I think it was Hans Zimmer. I think there was someone else that uh, yeah. collaborated with him. I can't remember who the name is. James uh, Newton Howard. James Newton Howard, that's correct. Um, yeah, the score. What did he do? He did, uh, let's see. He did um, the Hunger Games music, um, and he did... Born so Legacy. Like, Born, yeah, he's, I think he did all the... Maybe he didn't do all the Born movies. He did all, he did all, he's done a lot of stuff. RV um, with uh, Robin Williams. That's movie. Uh, the, the Last Airbender, M. Night Shyamalan. I haven't seen any of these movies except for uh, Hunger Games. Um, yeah, the music in this movie is its absolutely the best. I think, to me, it's the best Batman music we've ever gotten. Um, it's my favorite, like, Batman theme. Mm-hmm. Oh, I agree. And then uh, I, will, I just like the story and how it explores Bruce Wayne as a character more personally and more... It's like I said, my problem with the old Batman movies is they're not focused on Batman. This one is all about Batman, and it's just it's. I love how well it handles it. We really get to know Bruce as a character. We see his journey to becoming Batman. Mm-hmm. Um, again, just Chris Nolan does an amazing job. This movie is incredible. Mm-hmm. So, yes. <laughs> one more thing before we give a grade. I do not like the bat suit at all. Really? I don't. Yeah, it's not um, very good. I just, this one's not great. It looks it gets awkward. Better. Yeah, oh, it gets way better, but it just looks awkward. Like the the head is just it, it's weird. It looks like he's got a pumpkin and under there or something. Oh, it's I, just so I, like it's misshapen and it's like the ears are protruding. It just looks strange to me. The oh, nose I, is enormous. Like oh this, yeah, this is my favorite of the three in Batman suits. Oh really? Yeah. Huh. Because to me, it feels the most bat. Like aside from Ben Affleck's suit. Um, this is my favorite, probably my favorite on-screen Batman suit, like live action was, because mm-hmm. it just like I mean, to me, it feels like the most like my Batman. I guess I don't know how to really Hashtag describe it. Just, hashtag just my Batman. Batman. There we go. 
Not yeah. like, not like, <laughs> not like, like my, you know, it's my band, but it's just like kind of what I go for when I look like wh- how I envision right. that band. But like more so, just um, it's less tactical mm. or less mechanical, I guess. Yeah. Like more like like the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight Rises suits remind me more of like the Arkham suits where they're more like mechanical and more like yeah. um, armored. Also, there was a severe lack of nipples on this thing. I yeah, that's that's, that's oh, the worst God. part about it. Honestly. TBH. <laughs> All right, let's do a grade here. Cody, I want to start with you. Let's throw this a nine and a half. Solid. Uh, I'll go eight and a half. Very, very good. Josh. Nine and a half. Boom, 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 boom. You can't guess what our next grades are gonna be. Yeah, <laughs> we might. Uh. <laughs> we'll see. It'll be interesting. All right. Uh, so, The Dark Knight came out three years later. I'll, I'm going to start here because this was a very important movie for me. Like, this was... I saw this movie and then another movie that's become my favorite of all time. I saw them about in about the span of a week. And it cha- it changed my life. Like, a, a few, I've only... I've only had, like, a three or four moments that have, like, really... Like, actually, as corny as it is, changed my life. And this is one of them. Hancock is your favorite movie of all time? Pretty much, ah. yeah. Like, Will Smith is absolutely fantastic no that no it, did, it didn't come out that, b- the week before but i it was an older movie that i saw a week before but i'm not gonna say yet is that lawrence olivier you're not lawrence olivier. No, um, no oliver stone movie that you won't tell us possibly um I just want to know what it is we'll talk about it someday someday very soon or not but no <laughs> i just like seeing this movie it's just like i was just like whoa <laughs> that's batman and he's doing like this it's just this awesome thing that's up there that I can just sit and and watch and it's just it's different and it's new and it's t- different and it's scary and it's different and I don't know what and I just kind of died like I, I like left movies. a little piece I think I like movies I think I like movies mom she's like I, we've known for years <laughs> you're a film guy no but really like as soon as this and then that other movie I just they're they're why I go to the theater Almost every week, you know. Well, sometimes. But um, they're why I go to the theater so much, and they're why I do anything creative, really. Like, this, that's the reason I do anything creative. Not that I'm going to do that as a career by any means, but it's because of The Dark Knight. And as cliche as it is to be one of your favorite movies, it's one of my favorite movies. Like, Everybody's it's top two. Movie. It's it's top two. So that's my, that's my initial spiel. Cody? What about you? I wish mine was as uh, deep as yours. I don't <laughs> remember seeing this for the first time, to tell you the truth. Uh, I was in the eighth grade, and I didn't care about movies yet. Yeah. All I remember was, oh, Batman, look at him. <laughs> look, he looks so cool. Look, he's, he's and that Joker. He's, he's funny and weird and awesome all at the same time. I'm kind of confused if I should like him or not. Right. Um, cause I don't remember if I knew about the controversy around him. Oh, like with him was, dying? Uh, oh, no. The, no, no. Well, the cast him contra- being Heath Ledger. Yeah. Was he dead by the time that movie came out? Yes. yes. He, he passed died away in February. In, yeah. No, it was uh, January of 8. Was it? Uh, yeah. Come on. I don't think I knew yeah. that he was dead. Was... Um, rest in peace, Heath Ledger, you're a great actor. Oh, my gosh. God. Oh. Imagine. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. So, yeah. sorry. But, uh, yeah, uh, Cody, keep. Go I just. It was. <sighs> Maybe it was subconsciously life changing. Mm-hmm. I don't know <laughs> if I started watching movies more after this, but yeah, seeing that movie, you're right. Movies like that are meant to be lived mm. in a movie theater. Yeah, I remember I did the triple feature with when The Dark Knight Rises came out. Oh, so did I. Where'd you do yours? Ithaca. Oh, I went to uh, AMC in Binghamton with reclining plush yeah, chairs. You. Ooh, you pro- how much did yours cost? Thirty bucks. Mine no, was fifty 25. bucks. Mine was twenty five dollars. But reclining chairs and snack to- coupons, so I don't know. Right. You probably win. I am sorry. <laughs> Ithaca was closer and again, I didn't become a movie guy until like last year. Yeah. So Yeah. Um, Keep going. Uh, you can do this. this. Is a great, great movie. <laughs> Josh, some initial thoughts. Well, I went into this movie as a young boy. And you came out. You came out a man. <laughs> I came out as a changed new man <laughs> that doesn't understand the world as he once knew it. Exactly. Um, this movie is, this is, it's, 
it's the Dark Knight. It's like, it's our Star Wars. Like it's our it's our Empire. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's it's like what what can I say that's not been said? This is like one of the best movies ever made. Honestly, it might be. Like there's there's this is this is like this is a great movie in a way that like maybe one or two a decade are, you know? Yeah. Like I don't know. I can't think of another I guess Lord of the Rings probably just at, together and Dark and the Dark Knight are the greatest movies of that decade. Yeah, I could imagine that. Like there's been a lot of really good ones, but I think great is reserved for stuff that just it just hits and it changes not everything, but it changes so many people's world, you know? Like they see, see yeah. things differently. I, I mean yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't the best movie two thousand eight because that was Slumdog Millionaire. So let's pump the brakes, shall we? God, ridiculous. Slumdog Millionaire is a good movie though. But it's not The Dark Knight. It's not The Dark Knight. You're right. Ugh, but it makes me wonder if The Dark Knight, like we're all of a pretty similar mindset when it comes to these movies, right? Um, <clears throat> and like the type of movies that we like. Mm-hmm. As much as we like to think we might have some diversity on this podcast. Most of our scores are within like two points of each other. Mm. I, I so, always play. I always play spoiler just because I'm a jerk. But. <laughs> um, <laughs> I stand by my four for Mockingjay Part Two. I stand by my nine. What did I give it? A seven and a half? Yeah, six like that. maybe. I don't remember. But anyways, you were saying. Sorry. Yeah, I forgot what I was saying. Um, I just I wonder if you have to be in like our kind of mindset to see this movie as. A film. I, don't, you know? I feel like everybody. This it it uh, the, it bridges every. Like everyone gap, I know? talk to, yeah, does. Like, like I'm sure there's somebody who exists that doesn't like this movie. Oh though. yeah, they're absolutely. And I'm sure they're all in the academy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, Only voting for white people. Yeah. Hashtag Oscar so white. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you you bring up an interesting point, but because like, there's people who are into films and like are you know filmmaking and stuff like that. Who don't like this, and they're perf- they're perfectly you you perfectly entitled not to like this movie. The way when they explain it, they sound it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But you're you cannot like this movie. But for people that just go to the movies to see, you know, just go to the movies. Like like I said, we said last week, once or twice a month. I haven't talked to anybody who doesn't love this. Like it's it's strange. It just it it does better as a movie than a film, despite it being one of the best acclaimed films ever. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's just it's this weird thing. I don't know. Uh, I love it. Uh, I think this movie, along with a couple others, is a special case though. Of that yeah, which is that gap. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Josh, anything you want to throw in? I mean, just a. I guess I mean I have a list of all the stuff about. It. I mean, just to run through. I mean, yeah, go the, go, go the, right through. We'll, the, we'll the comment per- sarcastically. I mean, the performances. I mean, we'll get to we'll get to what we really want to talk about. Right. Probably save the best for last, but of course. Um, but I mean, the performances are all incredible. I mean, not just you know Heath Ledger, but I mean Christian Bale, Maggie Gyllenhaal is a definite improvement over Katie Holmes. I think she's much more fitting. She, I still don't think she's great, but she feels nat- more natural. Hey, yeah, I feel like the character of Rachel Dawes is kind of unnecessary. Yeah, it's just kind of a, she's just kind of a weak character, but she's necessary to the story. Oh, in this, yeah, but I think they could have ran around her. Yeah. And um, still made just as good as a movie. Um, no, yeah. no, she, I th- I disagree. I think she was completely necessary for this movie yeah. to work. You have to have her in it. I think, especially for Harvey. Um, yeah. Well, okay. Um, but and, speaking of Harvey, Dan, uh, Aaron Eckhart does an incredible job. As what? That was the first movie I saw him in. And the yeah. last you'll ever see him in. He is like, what happened to that guy? He went, he did uh, that movie with the aliens. That I, I know, but like, he was in The Dark Knight, and he's just disappeared. Yeah. That's crazy. He's in- He's busy being in uh, London Has Fallen. I'm actually excited for that one. The acclaimed franchise with Gerard Butler. Um, and yeah, I mean, he was great. I loved I loved his story um, in the movie. Um, again, Michael Caine, uh, great. Uh, uh, can, I, can I jump in one yeah, more time? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so Rachel Dawes, of course, had to be recast because Katie yep. Holmes decided to be in Mad Money, which... <laughs> it was a great career move. So, have you guys? Latifah. Yeah, and Queen. Oh God, Queen Latifah. <sighs> but um, have you guys ever heard of the people that were also considered to replace her? Nope. It's an interesting list. 
Uh, one of them is Sarah Michelle Geller yeah. from I Know What You Did the Last Summer, Scooby Doo, mm-hmm. great films. Uh, Isla Fisher. Who's that? Mm. She mm. was in Now You See Me last a couple years ago. She's right headed. Uh, she was in Wedding, Wedding Crashers, I guess. I, I don't know her. Yeah, she's What's her name? Isla, Isla, I-S-L-A Fisher, pronounced Isla. But here's where it gets interesting. Rachel McAdams. Mm-hmm. Okay. And last but by no means least, and God, I wish she this girl got half the roles that she's been up for. Emily Dame Blunt. Maggie Smith. No, Emily Blunt. <laughs> Emily Blunt was considered for Rachel Dawes. Oh, that would have been so good. And we settled for Maggie Gyllenhaal. Good job, Chris. Uh, I think, I mean, honestly, I think Maggie Gyllenhaal would have been, not to, not because I think Emily Blunt's a better actress, but I think I'd probably go with, I'd still go with Maggie Gyllenhaal, oh. just because she fits... To me, she feels like the more natural, most natural of mm-hmm. the bunch. Um, because right. I feel like the best way to approach this character if they were going to recast, because the problem with her in the first one was she felt out of place mm-hmm. and she kind of stood out. The best way to go go is someone who kind of blends in more and is a bit more seamless in the role. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the best way to go, she'd probably be the most safe bet for something like that. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I still would go Emily Blunt just just by principle. She's, she's amazing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't complain, but no. But uh, all right, yeah. Continue on your list, buddy. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, the rest of the cast is incredible. Uh, I mean, and then this movie is a this is a crime thriller. This is a crime drama, a crime thriller. This goes above and beyond a superhero movie. This is it's incredible. I mean, this is you know like just it's one of those great like crime saga type film, films it's, I, it's kind of like um i'm not gonna say these movies are on a different league but it's kind of like the winter soldier and marvel yeah like, except dark knight's way better than winter soldier yeah but mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's the same basic concept it transcends being a superhero movie into a yeah. different genre yeah it just does. happens to involve superheroes yeah it, it's a it, this was a genre movie a comic book genre movie before it was cool like if you ever yeah. notice, if you ever, if you really look, really look to notice, Iron Man, and I guess maybe Iron Man Two were like the first Marvel Marvel movies, and they were like comic book movies. You know, they had the, uh-huh. the crazy villains, all that kind of stuff. Marvel changed up. I, I conspiracy theory. I think Marvel changed up how they make their movies based on Dark Knight, because they like they've because Dark Knight was like, like we said a comic book genre film, and they've kind of been doing that. But that's my conspiracy theory. So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go hold a sign out in front of City Hall and scream all day. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, But yeah, I mean, the story, Matt, and then just Chris Nolan, the storytelling in this movie is it's perfection. Mm-hmm. Every, so- every single piece of the puzzle fits perfectly into place, and it's put in the, exactly where it should be. There's no shots that go on too long. There's no scenes that feel rushed or too, like, like, uh, slow down or drag everything just goes together perfectly where it should be um it starts perfectly it ends perfectly it on un- every story unfolds perfectly everything about this movie is just handled to perfection yeah you're absolutely right um yeah again uh the again the action scenes the, another thing i was i mean especially the big i mean you know again going back to the chase scene the big chase scene in this movie where we get we finally we see the bat pod revealed oh my god i exploded when i finally saw that that was amazing mm-hmm. um i just I, I mean i just rewatched this movie two or three days ago and like just for the i mean just the f- opening bank heist scene oh it's so good my my jaw was like i i've seen this movie a million times i'm sitting i'm just like i'm i was gonna put it on and i was about to start doing like some laundry or something before i was like gonna sit down but like i just like stared I was just staring at my TV with my jaw open for like five minutes, and I like didn't get to do any of that stuff for a few minutes because I was just like, I was just like in awe of how perfect it was. Mm-hmm. It's, just, it's incredible. Um, it's a definitely it's also a darker movie than the first one, which was already a dark movie. Um, um, and yeah, I mean, it's obviously the greatest superhero movie ever mm-hmm. um, to me. Anyway. Um, uh, and the music continues to be incredible. The score for this movie is one of the best. Not just, I mean, it's just one of my favorite scores of all time. Um, the visual, and there's, there's, I mean, no one really talks about it, but the visual effects in this movie are incredible. 
because it's the type, it's the visual effects. The best effects are the ones you don't see. Exactly. And it's mostly practical, isn't it? it there's a lot of practical, but there's a lot of CGI. But it's it, to me again, this is why this is how visual effects should be done. There's a lot of practical stuff, but there's CGI interwoven in there where it needs to be kind of uh, make it as best as it can, and it works perfectly. I'm trying to think, I can't even remember a scene other than uh, the one like where that. He, uh... You know, the helicopter that falls out of the sky when he crashes the truck. Uh huh. Practical. That's that's okay. Oh, Fair enough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I completely forgot about that. I was gonna say, other than the scene where um, Batman is flying from that skyscraper in Tokyo. Yeah. Unless that was practical somehow. And they tr- no, that was that was CG, but they tried to do that. But the what was it? It's what China wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hong Kong. I'm a racist. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. They they refused to um, uh, turn on turn off some of the lights, so. They didn't. They couldn't do it. But, Jerks. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna get into some a little, just a quick another note of casting because the casting for this movie is fascinating. I think. Um. So the, there were f- a few actors uh, being considered for Harvey Dent. One of some of them were Mark Ruffalo. Okay. Hmm. Leave Schreiber. Leave Schreiber. Whatever. Same thing. <laughs> and Josh Lucas, who I Who's think that? went on to play. Young Ra's al Ghul. I'm pretty hmm. sure. I'm not positive, though. No, he wasn't. He's just some random guy. Some guy. <laughs> yeah, he's just sort of some guy. But um, And then they offered the role. Also, Hugh Jackman was and Ryan Phillippe were considered. And they actually offered the role to Matt Damon. But he had to oh. turn it down. So. For what? Uh, for Harvey Dent. I know, no, for what movie? Why did oh, he turn Invictus. it down? Oh, is that a good choice? I didn't see that. No, in retrospect, no. But, and then for the Joker, it was Heath Ledger, Sam Rockwell. That would be so cool. And Hugo Weaving. Oh, wow. Hugo Weaving would have been awesome. Yeah, that would have been that would have been interesting. But um, so yeah, I, casting in this movie absolutely fascinating. But um, Sean Penn actually was Christopher Nolan and Warner Brothers' first choice for the role of the Joker. That wouldn't have been awesome. Yeah, that would not have been. That would have been very <laughs> cool. But uh, uh, sorry, Josh, you have more more stuff on your list? No, that's that's pretty much the sum, the overall gist of it. But right, the whole going into movie. the going, going into the Joker. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, hold off on for that yeah. one second. I want to get just some Cody. Anything we didn't cover from your eyes? Um, cinematography. Right. Yeah. Probably the best in the series. Yeah. Um. Whenever I think of it, I think of that one scene. It's right after um. Harvey Dent blows up. Yes. And Batman's standing there with yes. the firefighters in the background, and he picks up the coin. That is one of the best shots in, in movie cinema history. Yes. It's so good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, uh, just this whole movie is so great. <laughs> kind of mad about it. <laughs> so I've got a really, I got a short list because um, <laughs> the thing that I said. Uh, in my notes here is just it's effing perfect <laughs> like that's kind of what it comes down to as much as you want to boil this down it's just perfect it really yeah. is um uh, i did i do have a couple these are complete nitpicks and they don't they literally do not matter but i never understood what he what batman did with like the bullet scans so after joker called in ate the orchard you'll find harvey dent there you know he mm-hmm. like cuts the brick out of the wall and he takes it back with him and then he shoots four more bricks and I doesn't do anything with them. He just scans the one that he, already, that he already has. I never understood that, but I think Batman, I'm I guess most likely wrong. Yeah. Okay. Feel free to throw um, anything up there. He was trying to see what caliber bullet it was to see how it shattered. So he could put it back together. Okay. To get a, oh, okay. That makes sense. I wish, th- I wish they would say that because I don't, I I don't I'm not then saying that I'm very smart, but I watch a fair <laughs> amount of CSI, so I, you know, I'm not sure how many people could piece that one together, but pretty yeah. sure half that show is BS anyway. So probably. <laughs> <laughs> should, I really I should ask a professional that, but um, and this last time I watched it, I watched it with fresh eyes because I've seen this movie probably at. at Somewhere between before now, twelve and fifteen times would be my guess. Okay. Like I've seen this a lot, and I watch it with. Fr- I try to watch it, and I th- think I succeeded with fresh eyes. And to put it plainly, last night I, I almost watched it again. 
<laughs> so that was that was kind of cool. I was just I literally had the disc in my hand. I was like, I could watch this again. I or, could right now. I might watch it again as soon as we're done. Honestly, I'm getting. I just got done watching it today. Yeah, the can... only movie I didn't watch of these three is Rises, but yeah, that one's ugh, that one's a, a whole another case. But before we get into the the elephant in the room, I want to tell a quick story. And this is from when I went to the marathon. Uh, so a friend and I, we went down to Binghamton. We got some speedies, and then we went to go see all the Batman movies on the big screen. And we got, you know, we watched Bat Begins. It was cool, fun, awesome movie, great, good time. And then we got to Dark Knight. And so we're sitting in these, like I said earlier, they're like they're reclining plush chairs. They're like lazy boys. They're great. They got cup holders. There's, you know, I uh, I was really nice. And my friend and I are sitting there, and I've seen this movie a, a ton of times. So what do I do? I start reciting all of the dialogue <laughs> word for word for about three, about four or five straight scenes until this is a true story. A woman, the woman sitting in front of me, turns around to me and says, "Shh, some of us haven't seen the movie before." I'm like, oh "Why God. are you here?" Because she's smart. <laughs> Ah, could well, you imagine like, not seeing any of those movies and then I know, deciding... but like, okay, why would that just? I don't know. That just always. So why would you go me. if you haven't seen it? Yeah, like I don't you know. Want to I don't know. I'm not defending this lady. That's no, really rude. Seems... But she, well, she, I mean, she could I have said be... it in a better way. Yeah, she was. She total... Could have phrased it. Say, hey, can you please stop? She was. Yeah, that's it. She said, "Some of us haven't seen it." I was like, what? if that's how she sounded, I don't know. I have a similar story, actually. Except I didn't get shushed at the end of it. You just kept going all the way through. No, no, I was I wasn't at the movies when I did it. It was um. Oh, nice. After prom, had a boy. Went back to my friend's house, and we watched both of those movies, both Batman Begins and uh, The Dark Knight, because Rises hadn't been uh, released yet. Nice. Back in <laughs> four time. I was reciting so many of those lines. I felt ashamed of myself. Oh, don't, man. I got word... <laughs> I literally got word for word, and I just felt like a king. It was awesome. Just, uh, <laughs> nothing feels better than successfully quoting one of Joker's monologues. Oh, my God. With the inflections <laughs> and the, 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 the lip licks and all I'm that stuff. I'm so serious. <laughs> uh, so uh, good. Speaking of, that was a good transition, Cody. Thank you for that. Let's... What? Let's... Elephant in the room. Heath Ledger is the Joker. I mean, come on. Yes. Just yeah. come on. This is my favorite performance in a movie. Ever. Second only to uh, Mark Hamill's Joker. Um, I would, I would even, I love, you know, I love Mark Hamill, Cody, but I would I, still, I'd pick really, Joker. Really, I don't know. I think it's the perfect Joker for this movie. Yeah. But just yeah, as yeah. a character, Mark Hamill. Okay. That's not really... saying I think this is one of also one of my favorite performances in a movie. Mm-hmm ever in the world yeah josh you said unequivocally your favorite yeah it's my favorite performance ever i've yeah. seen this movie like multiple like at least 20 something times mm-hmm. it gets better every time i watch it i'm he is he is he becomes another he doesn't he doesn't act he doesn't perform he becomes a character like it's terrifying how like not even just I don't even know how to describe how perfect he is in this movie. You, because you pretty much said it. He's he's perfect. A, he's the Joker. Like, like you don't see anything resembling a person really with him. Yeah. Like I, I, I the same as you. I at one point in the movie I paused it. I paused the movie. I can't remember which scene it was, but it was like a it was a full frontal shot of like Joker and his face, and I stood I sat there for like five or ten minutes, and. I know that this he's an actor under makeup, but I just couldn't see Heath Ledger. I just I just saw the Joker. Yeah. Like that's him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like I like Heath Ledger. Like I, I liked him. I thought he was a good I, but never was I was like, whoa, this is like the next big thing. Like mm-hmm. Ten Things I Hate About You is a really great movie. He's really good in it. Or, yeah. Uh Brokeback Mountain, obviously. He's, you know, really great in that movie. But never did I ever like I mean, I saw those movies after I saw him. This is my first experience my first exposure to like him. And I saw those movies after, like, I went back, like, who's the Heath Ledger guy? And I, like, look at these movies he's been in, and I'm like, he's really good in these movies, but, like, this, this, is, Joker. this, this isn't him. This this can't be him, because the, he that 
is not an actor in the in the Dark Knight. That's that's the Joker. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's unbelievable. Honestly, to me, Day Lewis is the only one who has given a performance to this caliber. Like he becomes Daniel Plainview. He becomes Abraham Lincoln. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just. Yeah. When they completely just they shed their skin and they're just your the actors should be chameleons. Most of them aren't. Like Leo has never had a Joker or you know Daniel Day Lewis kind of performance. Like no, just nobody. Like there's there's maybe been five of these kind of performances. It's just it's insane. Like and there are, and there are a lot of people that have said like oh he only won his reward because he died that's bullshit Absolutely and that is ridiculous and like every time every time i've seen multiple people i mean a couple one of, even one of my friends said that i'm just like you're out of your like no he was going to win that award the second that 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 movie was released at the end of the prologue he pretty much there's <laughs> like okay no 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 i Oscars. killed the bus driver i would love to see the voting for that just to see what it was like uh, but it was unanimous it had to be unanimous yeah this was a stack year too josh brolin for milk Robert Downey Jr. for Tropic Thunder, which is the best Academy Award nomination ever. I will that's <laughs> the best one. Phil Seymour Hoffman in Doubt. Michael Shannon Revolutionary Road. I've I don't know if you guguys have seen Doubt, but I've I s i did see Doubt. That is like that's that might be Philip Seymour Hoffman's best performance, and he's Philip Seymour Hoffman. And he still lost to Heath Ledger. Like it's it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. But um like what was the first I guess, did you see him for the first time in the movie, you guys? Hmm? Did you guys, was the first thing you saw from him in the movie, or did you like trailers and video and um, pictures, stuff I like actually, that? I, somehow I managed to like go into this movie completely blind. That a boy. I, because at that time, I guess, I mean, I didn't really keep up with like trailers and everything. It's like, I think I may have seen like a TV spot or something, mm-hmm. and that's it. And then like, I didn't even see it in theaters. I saw it on dvd i rented it the first like as soon as it came out on dvd and me and my dad watched it together and i was just like i I, i'd seen like no tv spots or all i'd heard like nonstop like the whole summer and all the way up until i came out like the dark knight dark knight you gotta see this thing the joker it's amazing everyone's talking i was like i want to see it and my dad rents it for me and i watch it that was the first time you saw it at home i need your help yeah Oh, you didn't see it in the theater? I mean, I had, a, I mean, I had like a big screen TV, a home theater set. That's, it's, that's not the same. But bruh, yeah. that's oh wow. But being in you. the audience, or being in that movie with an audience who loves I know. that movie, mm-hmm. I know. is it's one of the better experiences in my, I've ever had in mm-hmm. a theater. Ah oh, man, I can I, I might watch this again tonight. I, know. <laughs> I, I might really, too. I'm getting that feeling. I'm getting that feel. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Back to Ledger, uh, I guess the th- I, f- I I don't know, I felt that watching this time around, I think he's pretty funny. He was, he's funny. This is a he's, funny performance. Like yes. he just like a lot, of, a lot. I've heard a lot of people say like he's not he's not funny. Like you're just like he's funny. He's just not God. like he's not funny the way you're used to Joker being funny. He's sadistic and terrifyingly funny. As in he makes jokes while he you know stabs people in the eye with a pencil yeah if you can show me one person who did not laugh in that scene like I, I, you have to check their pulse because it's mm-hmm. it's sadistic but it's still it's the, that scene is the perfect representation of this joker i'm sorry which scene again the oh, i pencil. um i'm gonna make the pencil, the pencil disappear oh right, right right yeah that's incredible but i i love oh, i love when... it <laughs> i loved right after he um i guess after batman kind of bailed out when he's like skipping and like da da dum da da dum over to Batman yeah. and he like yeah. and when Gordon puts the gun up against his head he's like could you please just give just me just a minute? one more minute just give... <laughs> and um, I also love there's this also this one where he's blowing up the hospital and he blows up and he walks he while he's walking up he's like oh yeah down the street in his like little like nurse outfit and he <laughs> and he and he stops for a second he's like just like tapping the, the thing he's, he's, like, yeah, he turns around so he reacts to it like, exploding they did they knew that that would happen they, they set the delay there but they didn't tell him about it like <laughs> and also how he a villain a a scary villain in a superhero movie dresses up as a woman and people are like okay not not campy, not silly at all. That's just okay. It works. Yeah, that's what he does. He goes along with his character. That's Joker, honestly. Like, oh my gosh. Um, uh, let's see. What else do we want to talk? Like about? even like 
like I have a friend that actually doesn't like this movie. I do know I have a friend that doesn't like the movie. What a but monster. even he, even he says he loves the Joker in this movie and it's his favorite Joker. Right. Like that's that that's how good he is. It's he's incredible. <sighs> it's just it's it's just the best. Uh I also we'll we'll wrap this up uh pretty soon. We got one more movie to get to. Yeah. Uh, but I just love the, of course, the best part of the Joker is just how he gets into people's heads, and not just like one or two, because he well he, he can do like you know with uh, when he was in the interrogation room with a cop, he got into oh his my head. God. He got one. Of, that's one of my favorite scenes. Honestly, yeah. he got into the whole city's head. He got into Batman's head, and it's just the manipulation. I think that element of the Joker is just out, just incredibly played. He's just this guy. He's got no limits. He just does what he does. Like it's. I just it's, do things. Yeah, that's the chaos. best. Like I'm a I'm a dog chasing chasing cars. Wouldn't know what to do. What if I c- caught it? I just do things. You know, it's just it's the this is the Joker, and uh, it just it just plays perfectly with the Harvey Dent story and then the Batman story and ah uh, man. So I want to watch this movie now. God. I know me too. Uh, wait, um, real quick, do you guys have any? Do you have a theory about who the Joker might be, like his backstory? Because I read an interesting one. I was wondering if you guys have ever uh, thought about this at all. Never really speculated. I've read theories before, but I've never. Uh... I I kind of I prefer just to have him just be this mysterious thing. Oh yeah, is... same. Uh, likewise, me too. But this one actually made a little bit of sense, so I wanted to share it. Somebody yeah. su- suspected that he might be a soldier. Yeah, I read that with one. PTSD. Because of like his, you know, blit, like um, kind of technical training and his, you know, that kind of war mentality that he has. I don't. know, I thought mm-hmm. that was interesting. Car so full of soldiers blows up. Nobody bats an eye. How that that speech is great. Where he's like, but I threaten one little mayor, like a, like a gangbanger or a <laughs> car full of soldiers. I never got that, and I I got it not last <laughs> not recently, but like a little a couple years ago. He's just talking about life, like in general. Like you expect <laughs> the soldiers, you expect you gangbangers, gangers, yeah. But you don't then, expect the mayor, and people freak uh, out about it. Like there's socially accepted deaths. Like that's like, that's what's so scary about him is that he just he's gets right. it. Yeah, he's so right. Oh my gosh! But just the way he's going about expressing it is all wrong. In another world, he'd be a genius. He is a genius in a way. Like so a just different kind of genius, but he's a genius. <sighs> that's Best just character confirmed. Oh man. Oh boy. Honestly, we might need, we might need to do an episode just solely about Dark Knight. Like even even after this, just like, watch it once every day for the whole week. Do like a, should do like an audio commentary for it. Oh, that would be oh, that'd be great. That'd be something. But this is just something else. Um, let's give a grade. I feel like this is gonna be anti. Can we just do all ten out of tens? Let's just yeah. On the yeah. count of three. One, two, three, ten. Ten. You did. We messed it up, but that's okay. Clap <laughs> sync, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> throwback yeah this is uh, what a freaking movie what a freaking movie. oh my gosh so let's move ahead a little bit four years later to the dark knight rises the return of the jedi of the batman movies yeah initial thoughts just like very the bare the bare basics what do you yeah. think i have a feeling i'm gonna be in the minority here okay so go I'm just ahead gonna say I like this movie. I do too. So oh, no. Okay, maybe I'm not in the minority. I like this movie a lot. I will defend this movie. It's a fun movie. It has problems, but it doesn't make it any less of a fun movie. Yeah. It's just it's it's good. Bane is awesome. One of my favorite villains. My second favorite villain. Even if he is kind of silly, <laughs> is Tom Hardy. It's just I, I I enjoy watching this movie when I watch it. Yeah. Josh, some initial thoughts? I love this movie. You love oh, really? it? I love The Dark Knight Rises. I don't care what people say. With a capital it. L or no, yeah, with, with, a, with a triple L and some heart emojis around I'm it. I'm really, really surprised. I love The Dark Knight Rises. I thought you would have hated it. No, I love it. I think it's awesome. Um, huh. I, I have problems with it. It's not perfect. It's my, exactly. least favorite. It's, it's my least favorite of the three. It has problems. It's not a perfect movie. But I love it. It's an awesome conclusion to this one of my favorite my probably my second favorite trilogy of all time mm-hmm. um i this movie is just just it's awesome mm-hmm. i love the dark Knight rises i like okay. it hey i like cool. it cool yeah i like it um i'm probably i think i'm closer to cody 
but like rewatching it, I'm just there was there was reasons I think why this isn't as good as the Dark Knight. It was never going to be as good as the Dark Knight. The villain. As I soon as uh, Heath Ledger walked into uh, yeah, screen. that's that's kind of what I'm getting at. Is like I it's obvious after rewatching the entire trilogy trilogy. This this does stick out kind of like a sore thumb, and even even if Nolan will deny it for till his dying day, this wasn't what they wanted to do. I don't think. I don't. I just. I feel think like, it is. I, I don't think know. it is what they wanted to do, but it's just not exactly what they wanted to do. I think they were gonna have Joker involved, but not. I mean, it still would have been what we got, but Joker would have had a presence, probably the same way Scarecrow was involved in Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises. Oh, no. I think they would have given him a better role. Yeah. Or a bigger it would, role. It would have been bigger, but it still would have been more similar to something like that. He um, wouldn't have been the main villain, but he would have had a presence. No. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I don't know. That's just... That just was kind of like... I just... I was a little... Not obvious, but it just was floating through my mind when I was watching this. I was like, yeah, it's... You can tell that this... This isn't what they were. This isn't what they were going for. So, which is not, you know, you you judge the movie for what it is. But w- with a case like this, and if it's in a trilogy, you kind of have to judge it for what it was setting up to be. You know, like imagine if okay, this is kind of a it's a different scenario. So just bear with me here. Imagine if you get into Star Wars Episode Six and Darth Vader disappears. And it's just some other guy, you know, like <laughs> I, just, that, that's that obviously is not. That's not a, and it's just it, Grand Moff Tarkin. Yeah, it was. Yeah, exactly. Or if it was just some new bad guy, you know, like Darth Vader was he's he and Joker are pretty much an equivalent in, uh, the, I guess, the second movie. But just if imagine he disappeared and they just got somebody else, you know. It, yeah. I mean, they did say that where Joker was during the Dark Knight Rises. Was well, that's where, an, that's where, an anomaly. That? I that doesn't oh, oh, where in the novelization? No, no. Oh, I mean, it's just like Nolan just like said it in like an interview. Can you tell me, please? That's what I'm he, asking. Yeah, he, he was just locked up in prison. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So how, that just how boring. I mean, what what else would they do? <laughs> he's not gonna be well after they say you and I are gonna at the end of the Dark Knight. He's like, oh, you and I are gonna do this forever. That's what killed it. That that's I, the thing is though. I think that's more metaphorical. That's not a literal thing. But he also got out of it alive. So you kind of and this is this. I don't know. It was such a big part of the movie where, like, why wouldn't you have him carry on, you know? No, Nolan also didn't even say, like, he's definitely doing a third one, too. Well, he, he did say, he said towards the end that he's always envisioned this as a trilogy. So okay. that was well after the fact. So I don't know, we could we could go for hours about what. Wait, so I, I have a point concerned. to ask if it's about the Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. So why doesn't anybody ever get mad that Batman straight up murders uh, Two-Face? What do you mean? He pushes him off that ledge. No, he tackles him. Still. He just, no, but he's doing it to save, I've always thought of it, he's like, He did, but save then him. why are people gonna... mad at Superman? Because people he... like to complain about Man of Steel for some because reason. Because the internet, that's why. Is that it? That, that's, okay. Yeah, people, the internet decides which movies to be, uh, okay, con- that's to have be controversial for some reason, and not others. I don't get it, but whatever. That's Fair enough. Issue for another. They'll, to... they'll come up with some BS reason if you tell, ask them that. But yeah. yeah. S- speaking of, uh, I, I had this written down that I was going to get too late, but I just want to bring up now since we're talking about this. The whole Bruce Wayne, how do you get back into Gotham? Ugh. What about those guys uh, two-thirds of the way through the movie who come in on that like truck? You know, like the the they meet up with Gordon and Blake and all those guys. Those guys got into Gotham just fine. Like, I don't get it. Like, what do, they were also working for the government. I know, but still. Who, could Bruce Wayne put on a disguise? I don't know. That's just... Bruce Wayne can do anything he wants. Exactly. He's Wayne. Bruce Wayne. No, here's the thing. It's a movie. That That's what people seem to forget when they talk about this. Yeah, and if like, you showed everything happen, it'd be a nine-hour long. It'd be three hours long. It would be no fun. What already is three hours long. But... It's, <laughs> yeah, it'd be four hours long, and it would be no fun. So, I... It's just that that's the one complaint that gets under my skin too it's just yeah who cares he I got mean, in and just enjoy it yeah dark knight has plenty of those kind of plot holes even if you want to call them plot holes Ugh, i hate that but um okay so yeah let's dig into likes and dislikes some just some main points josh we'll start with you um i get i mean to me this is the best christian bale is at has ever been as batman i think his performance in this more actually 
I'd say as it's Bruce Wayne. As Bruce Wayne. That's what I was yeah. I mean, yeah. This is much more of a Bruce Wayne movie than a Batman movie than the other two. Um, more not because I I mean in a sense the first one is the most Bruce Wayne focused movie, but this is the most like Bruce Wayne. Yeah, movie, yeah, yeah. I like guess, Bruce, uh, private Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Okay. Because it's really just about him, not not the how Batman and his life collide, but like just about Bruce Wayne as a character, as a human being, the real Bruce Wayne. And we see all that I mean, in Christian Bale's performance. I mean, especially in those scenes where he's um, locked up in the prison, um, or what was it called? The, uh, the pit, uh, Lazarus pit. Um, those, those scenes are phenomenal. I love his performance in those scenes. Um, and, and again, and, uh, my favorite scene in the movie is where he escapes, um, where he um, gets out of the, the pit at the top where he climbs. That scene is so hype. It's awesome. It's, it's incredible. Um, and there's and then uh the rest of the performances are great uh and halfway a lot of people thought she was gonna be terrible as catwoman i thought she was awesome i thought she was horrible but we'll oh, get to that oh Ooh. really really wow. yeah i did not like her at all i, thought, I don't I, like her overall just I, in general as an actress as an actress as a person i just can't stand her she's she's Hathaway's awesome i know she reminds me of a theater kid and i don't like theater kids everyone hates <laughs> her because she's too nice and that's um emily um, blunt she was also considered for catwoman she should have uh, the role she um, literally screen tested if I if my that's what if she got both roles as uh, Maggie Joan Hall and... <laughs> that'd be great. I'd rather um, have her as Rachel to be honest with you, and anybody else as Catwoman, like <laughs> Zoe Saldana. She was up for Catwoman. Oh, that would have been great. Yeah, that would have been cool. But anyway, sorry, Josh. But yeah, uh, I just like and then just like the take the way they approached the Catwoman character, the Selena Kyle, um, way the interval of death. I thought that was really cool. I thought that uh, worked really well. Um, and then you got another new character, John Blake. Um, played by Joseph Gordon-Levitt. I really liked him, um, and I uh, thought he was a really uh, interesting. Add this really interesting new dynamic. Um, the rest of uh, and Tom Hardy as Bane, <sighs> awesome <laughs> villain. Um, I, I don't, I don't care if people have a problem with the voice. Ah, uh, yes. That it, but at the same time, that is a voice where if you hear a line, you know immediately who that is. That's an iconic voice. Yeah. People imitate that voice all the time. It's crazy, I and people complain. Just did. Yeah, literally. It's it all the time. I love yeah. the voice. Do you it's guys like favorite. the voice? Oh, yeah. I love the, I love the voice. Yeah, that's what I thought. I think it's awesome. I think there are a couple times where it's a little too muffled, just it's a little hard to understand. But other than that, I think it, it works. It, it, I mean, Tom Hardy crushes it. It's really menacing. Mm-hmm. Um, the scene, my, one of my favorite scenes where just Tom Hardy is completely, like, terrifies me as Bane is where he's talking to um, the, that, like, one, like, really dick-centered uh, guy. Yeah, do you uh, feel in yeah. charge? Yeah, do you feel in charge? And he just puts his hand on his shoulder. <sighs> That's and so I, When I saw that in the theater, I got chills. I was like, oh my god, I'm, I'm afraid to be like in the same theater right now. Because this is really intense. Yeah. Christopher um, Nolan liked Ben Mendelsohn before it was cool. But fun <laughs> fact, for about six months afterwards, I had reoccurring nightmares. Like These are the last nightmares I had of Bane like, chasing me down in my real life. Like I remember one of them, I was sitting in math <laughs> class. And he just bursts through the door and, like, comes after me and just, uh, it was, like, literal nightmares. And I was, what, 16, 17, 18, something like that? I'm racist. I, yeah. I was like, wondering just... what you would add first. I was, I'm not going to try to top that. You got, you won. You got it. But, oh, uh, real quick, casting, because I love casting. Uh, DiCaprio. Ryan Gosling and Mark Ruffalo were all considered to play John Blake. So there you go. Well, Gosling would have been cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. I, think, yeah. Um, I don't think DiCaprio would have been that great. You know, to tell you the truth, I, there was some. They wanted him for the Riddler. Yeah, that that's what Warner Brothers wanted. But no one's like, nah. That would right. look so weird because he's not very much younger than Christian Bale. <laughs> yeah, whatever. That's why I don't think he'd work very well as uh, John Blake. True, true. I tried to get you know the scene, of course, the scene in the football stadium. I almost got to go to that and be, in, be an extra. I, oh, really? I was so close, yeah. I had something to do. I made calls and everything. Ugh, made me sad. But, um, oh yeah, and a little bit more casting. So, Anne Hathaway, Jessica Biel, Gemma Arterton, Blake Lively, Kate Mara, Charlotte Riley, and Kira Knightley all auditioned. Oh, and Emily Blunt for the role of Selena Kyle. And then we won. Yeah. Blake Lively, well, I forgot about her. So. Blake Lively really, you know, she struck gold with that Green Lantern instead of this. Yeah. She she really she was the MVP. But Gemma Arterton would have been really interesting. 
She's awesome. No, she's really she's very pretty too. So, and she's not Anne Hathaway, which is the best of all. Um, any other casting? Da, 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 da. John Cena auditioned for Bane. Oh my god! No, I just I made that up though. Oh. I want that more than I want anything right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait. You can't <laughs> Matt, see me. Wait. I'm Bane. He wait, does no. the hand thing. You can't see me. <laughs> Macy, remember the one, remember the remember the one scene in Trainwreck with uh, John Cena and Amy Schumer in having sex. That oh one scene. Gosh. Imagine him doing the Bane voice in that scene with the mask on. There is no I in team. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, okay, so yeah, likes and uh, dislikes. Where, where where were we before I interrupted? Sorry. Um. Bane. <laughs> casting. You're talking about casting. Yeah. yeah. You're making a joke about. Oh wait, one more. Scenes. Sorry, one more casting. One more. Just one more. This is for Miranda Tate. Kate Winslet, Naomi Watts, and Rachel Weisz were considered to play Miranda Tate. So that's it. I'm done. Uh, oh, and uh, speaking of Miranda Tate, did any, did you guys like guess who she was? Oh, absolutely. You, you pretty much. I, the thing that about was that was is, um, I looked on Wikipedia. I remember one day I was in French. And we were in the computer lab at school, but I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. And I was on Wikipedia for The Dark Knight Rises, and I saw that Talia al Ghul was in the movie. I was like, wait, what? And then I forgot about it. <laughs> and then when it came up, I was like, oh, wait. Oh, sweet. Awesome. Cool. I forgot Talia was a person. Yeah. And then it was a movie. It was, it was I kind of just assumed. I, I pretty much, that's what a lot of people were guessing. I was like, oh, that would be, that would make sense. It would be interesting because I was, I was. It seemed like the movie was definitely tying into Batman Begins and like the right. rock, the um, League of Shadows stuff, yeah. um, and that would make sense. But I, I kind of like when I see a movie, if I speculate something, I pretty much forget about it the second the movie starts. So I mean, I saw that and it really it was I thought it was a really cool twist. But yeah, I yeah, called that from the beginning. I, I don't know. I saw that coming a mile away because not because I'm some genius or whatever, but I have this book from like 2007 or something like that. That's like a Batman encyclopedia it's a really cool book um and in one of them i specifically remember and i've always held this kept this in my head for some reason that raz al ghul in the comics he he wanted batman to be like his heir you know he wanted bruce wayne to be his heir mm -hmm. and for and said for a brief time he considered that bane would be the would be able to become his heir so from then i always i've always had that in the back of my mind and i was like when i watched the movie i was like yeah that's that's expected, but that that goes into my whole. I don't think this is the movie they in, initially intended to make thing that we won't touch up touch upon. But it was it was obvious to me, so I was just like, okay, well, that's happening. So so yeah. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I thought she was. I I liked. Um, actually, I I thought performance wise, she was great. Um, what's her name? She's in Macbeth. What's uh, Marion? Marion Cotillard. Marion. And Coyard. Um, yeah, she's. I thought she was awesome in this movie. Mm -hmm. um, other things. I mean, uh, just again, similar to just like the the last two. I mean, cinematography is looks incredible. Oh, also, look it's really underrated. Shots. The the fact that she has sex with the guy that she killed her dad is like really underrated and is a really <laughs> interesting part of her character. Like that, mm -hmm. she was like dying she's committed inside. to her role. Yeah, like I've always, I, when I we watched, I was like, "Damn, that's intense." Mm. But um, I mean, it is Christian Bale, so come on. that's true. But I let me since my list is like super long, I'm just gonna go through it real quick, and feel free to pipe. Uh, yeah. Let me know what you guys think. Um, it feels eight years later, if that makes sense. Like I just, you feel like time has passed. You know? Yeah. You mm -hmm. just get that. It just seems. I don't it's know. Done. It just it seems fresh, but also the same, you know, like eight years. Like if you if you come back home after being gone for eight years, come back to your hometown. It's it's kind of got that feeling, you know. Yeah. Um. Also, I didn't I didn't care for J Joseph Gordon Levitt. Really? I thought he was pretty good, but yeah. I mean, I thought Gosling would have been cooler personally, but um, I just. But did you didn't know that when you went and saw it the first time? Yeah, that's true. And even then, I didn't really. I was like, oh, okay, really? he's fine. Uh, but. Um. Yeah, he's he's kind of along the same lines as Marin Cotillard for me. I just feel like they try a little bit too hard, and I can see their acting a little bit too much. Cause like Gary Oldman's so like committed and subtle, and these guys are just like, okay, uh, you know, that's fine. It's just it just kind of they stuck out a little bit. Is what I'm trying to say. 
Um, also, I feel like they should have cut out the first, um, cause the, like the Alfred, when he was like, oh, I went to Italy and I had a Fermi Blanca and like this really tiny glass. <laughs> I feel uh-huh. like showing that kind of took the punch out of the ending ending, which we'll oh, get really? to. I yeah. I it to it. So you like, think that, that initial like yeah, they, flashback where they he's just, just looking and they don't see anything. You, you yeah. think they should have gotten rid of that, but kept the ending, right? Yeah. They should have cut that first part. Cause once you see it and it's like, they've shot something for that. Then it was to me, I was like, okay, well that's going to come uh, back. You know, we're going to imagine that. Okay. But, um, I'm not mad about that statement. Yeah. I also, I somebody said something really interesting about the ending that they shouldn't have showed Bruce at all. Just show Alfred doing his thing, sitting Reacting. down, and that smile cool. and nod to somebody. People would have complained that it was too much like uh, Inception. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like I like it when people get pissed about Inception. That's <laughs> awesome. Inception's <laughs> a great movie. Um, Let's see. I like how Batman's a myth. That's really cool. He's like the Loch Ness Monster almost. It's really like people are like, ah, oh, he didn't exist. Or I don't know, maybe he did. Stuff like that. And the kids, like, you know, the kids are asking about Batman, like young kids who don't, you know, don't remember what it was like. Stuff like that. So that was cool. Uh, I say have Anne Hathaway sucks with like six U's, so that. <laughs> with an X or a CK at the end. Oh, CK. Ah, oh, no. oh, missed an opportunity there. That Homer education though. <laughs> uh, did a, Gary effing Oldman, so we know awesome. my thoughts on that one. He's awesome. Bane is terrifying. Um, they say that Blake is a hothead like sixty three times. <laughs> it's all that guy from Full Metal Jacket. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Get this hothead out of here. So we need more hotheads heads in here. Like, oh, is he a hothead? Bane's <laughs> lair, like the tunnels, and yeah. that actually that's awesome because it connects to the first movie when they say that, um, like this the the sewer system is condensed under Wayne Tower, so they like blow up the ceiling and like get all the stuff. Oh yeah, that was kind of a that was one of the spots where it came back around. That was kind of clever. Uh, I liked how they took away the Wayne Enterprise's safety net. Because Batman's always had that to be like, I need toys, I need money, and he's had Wayne Enterprises. They kind of took that away from him. I thought that was cool. Um, it, oh, yeah, it adds urgency to the story. Uh, the, the Batman versus Bane fight, let's spend a few minutes on this. God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Incredible. C- Cody, I want your take on it. What's? Oh, my God. I, <laughs> I love that fight. Mm-hmm. I, sometimes I watch it still. Just that fight. Yeah, it's so good. It's so well choreographed. Like, I mean, you guys were complaining about Batman Begins is mm-hmm. Begins is yeah Begins whatever. Um, <laughs> their uh, camera work for the fight scenes, it's perfect in this one. Mm-hmm. It's just it's so good. That whole fight, Bane's monologue is instantly a classic. I still quote that sometimes. <laughs> oh, you think darkness is your ally? I say it to my cats when they hug. <laughs> 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 it's just oh, it's so good and when he um breaks batman over his knee i remember i was like Bro. so excited my hand went over my mouth because i read that um yeah red nightfall at least right up to that part and i was like oh my god it's just like the book and, uh, it, it, yeah. it's probably my favorite fight scene yeah mine in all three yeah, same. It's it's right behind the interrogation scene from Dark Knight is oh. the best scene in the whole trilogy, and then like the rest of Dark of the Dark Knight, pretty much every other scene is behind it. So like, that's yeah, like just deception. That whole like I mean everything for to me it was just like felt like this build up to the big moment where he gets his back broken because like pretty much the the teasers were so I don't want to say on the nose but they were really like telling us that it's gonna happen. And then mm-hmm. they were showing it. I mean, they showed it in that first teaser poster with Bane and the broken Batman mask behind him. Hanging up on my wall. <laughs> I love that. I love that poster. Um, but if you're building up to something and it pays off, and it, it works, works. It's yeah, awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. But like, it's like it doesn't. And it's so like this whole movie. I'm like, I'm gonna get to this fight. I'm like, is it gonna happen? Is it gonna happen? And I'm like, I'm, I'm like freaking out. Like, I don't, I don't want it to happen. But I'm like, oh my god, it's gonna happen. It's gonna be happening. That'd be so cool. And then it happens. And I'm just like, sitting, like I saw it for the first time with like my family. So. <laughs> they're not like they weren't like into the stuff like I was. So I was staring there like I was like geeking out. I was like, and they're just well, my like mom looks over me like she's like weirded out. I'm just like, oh my god, is that? you know what I can compare this to? <laughs> Except for the um the ending where I get excited that it happens. I know you don't care for this movie, or Mason. Do you like Whiplash? I don't yeah, know I like Whiplash. I know. I s- oh, you don't like Miles Teller? No, I don't. I as that he's whole, a- the, the last ten minutes of that movie is basically how I feel. Yeah, <laughs> during that fight, so much and fun. even though I know it's gonna happen, 
whenever when Qui Gon Jinn and Darth Maul are by themselves at the end of uh, Phantom yeah. Menace, that yeah. lead up to Qui Gon getting effed up, mm-hmm. like I start feeling that to a lesser degree. I don't feel anything in that too. But the I, yeah, f- the lack of music and the use of IMAX just makes that one of the best just scenes. Like, that's just such a perfect scene, and Bane yeah. is just such a he's just such a force. And he like grabs Batman by the throat and ban and Batman says something about a gang of psychopaths and he just has this moment where he like he looks off to the distance just to think for a second and he just pummels Batman and like his <laughs> back like three times just boom 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 right there and it's just it's just it's awesome like that's it's communicated by a gang of gang psychopaths, psychopaths. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much I'm Ross Algo's destiny no leader of the League of Shadows yeah. like. <laughs> A uh, couple more. <laughs> this was kind of like a stupid thing. Uh, actually, a uh, serious thing first. I always felt the nuclear bomb thing was a little far fetched, but yeah, yeah, it's it's fair enough. That goes back to the whole, you know. You got to raise the stakes from the last movie. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But they they obviously were they're pulling from Dark Knight Returns, Nightfall, and then No Man's Land. So mm-hmm. you kind of that was a logical place to go to. But you know, it's it's whatever. Uh, that again goes back to the whole this isn't the movie they probably isn't the movie they wanted to make but anyways this, this is also kind of a funny stupid one so you know how Bane leaves that TV for Bruce when he's in the pit <laughs> yeah just to just because this is I'm, I'm six years old and this is where my mind goes so he throws the rock and breaks the TV what if he gets there and Gotham City is just destroyed like just gone went off, he doesn't know like, 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 shit oh, it went off man. early didn't it oh like <laughs> I feel like that'd be funny. <laughs> that would be funny. That'd be great, like a college humor sketch or something. Uh, da, 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 okay. One more, one more thing, and then I'll shut up for a while. So the whole twist, I guess, at the end with Bane loving Talia. When I watch that again, and I, I know where people see this element of it, but when I watch this again, I got the brotherly vibe more than the he wanted her vibe. You know? Oh yeah. Totally. Uh huh. I, I feel like I don't. I don't know if that's ever been seen the other way around. I thought that was kind of just the general way. It oh, was... really? Because I, I, I saw from the other way that he was, uh, he loved her. Maybe, maybe the novelization shed some more light on that. But, uh, yeah. So. Yeah, because it felt to me he was just he was her protector. Yeah, I felt I got the older brother rather than the because people yeah. were like oh Bane got friend zoned. I think that's what I oh, what I got that I never, from. People I never have been saying that. that, but now that you mention it, you're right. Their relationship is not a a love relationship like yeah. a romantic. It's um it's definitely familial. Yeah, they uh, became a uh, family in that prison. Yeah, so that was just something. I don't know. I just when I watched it again, I was like oh I didn't think about it like this. Hmm, that makes more sense, and I I feel like that's a much better twist than being like. He is like her lovesick puppy dog instead of like yeah. he's her brother who's just looking out for her, you know. Like that. But <laughs> yeah, huh? And then One the thing last... I can say about this movie, can I just yeah, it's, absolutely, it's real quick. It's real stupid. It's just like oh, that's what I played last one time. It's um, Sorry. this is the movie that ruined other Tom Hardy movies for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because whenever he grunts in any movie at a sale, he's like, he does pain like he does it like twenty times because he says nothing in Mad Max. <laughs> I see just we came back the way we came. I'm like, what? <laughs> Bane? Is this the prequel? <laughs> that'd, like, be so much. that'd be awesome. A Bane prequel. That would have been interesting. That'd be yeah. cool. But um, And then the, the last thing, and I, I kind of said this before, but just to put a bow on this, the trilogy just feels incomplete without the Joker. Even mm-hmm. with, yeah. Because they, think of it, you set it up in the first one, he comes, with, it comes ahead in the second film, he's really the big player, and then the third movie, he's gone, you know? Obviously, there's not you, there's nothing you can do about that. They had to make a different movie, but you know, it just. I mean, as if you look at the movie as it is, it just it feels incomplete. So that's my last yeah. thing I'll say about it. To me, it's just the movie, the trilogy as a whole, didn't feel like Batman and the Joker's journey. It felt like it was just about Bruce Wayne's journey mm-hmm. as Batman, and I feel, to me, it just it works better with having three. He faces Scarecrow in the first one. That's a good intro, so we can really focus on Batman. The Joker is really where we learn about, you know, Gotham, and we see this new villain, and you know, it brings out different sides of Batman. Um, and then the third one, we kind of revisit. It kind of, like I said, it's like a third movie rule where you go back and you revisit elements of the third one. 
you can it you know I guess it connects things right that weren't there before um it bridges gaps so to me it felt to me it felt pretty complete um okay and to, and I think uh, I don't know if, who I think it was Christopher Nolan they said they were the reason they didn't because they still could have like ex- done more explanation or acknowledgement of the Joker but they chose not to just out of respect um yeah I I don't respect though like. Would it, how would it be disrespectful to just do, to do something like the, uh, uh, I don't know. I think what he was talking about to the family was no, no, it was um like having someone else dress up as the Joker, right, right, right. like put the makeup on. Like I think that's what they, he was talking they about. They did. Like, I know that they originally they were looking at ways to take unused footage and incorporate it. it in. mm-hmm. But yeah. That's that was. I mean, you can't blame them. It's those were just shitty circumstances all the way through. So, but you know, that's life. Uh, so anything you guys want to talk talk about before we get to the ending? Um, because I feel like that's where a lot of the a, a big conversation about the movie comes from. Nah, that's, I mean, yeah, really you just get into that. I guess. Yeah. So the ending. I guess from from the explosion onwards. What are some thoughts, Cody? I like it. It doesn't make me as mad as everybody else. It makes everybody else. Does it make people mad? Yeah, yeah some people hate this ending. Really? Oh yeah. God, they Why? hate these guts. That's the point. No, it's okay. um, it's just. I don't know. I I like it. People say it's too um, it's too happy. It. It's it's a plot. People just like it's a plot. plot we couldn't have gotten far away enough. Yeah, like, in order I, to I can I, I can address every single element of this. And I can address saying it's a goddamn movie. Just let it be. <laughs> Not uh, everything has to be gritty realism. It can. Right. Let it take so, liberty, please. Well, just enjoy the movie. Why can't any of you guys have fun? Before I before um, I get to the ending. I do. I have a couple little gripes. Mm-hmm. Um, let's just go over those real quick because I don't have a lot. Like some some people have a bunch of problems with this movie. I have just a little, and it's really just the plot hole. There are plot holes. I mean, there there are plot holes a lot, quite a bit of them in this movie. They're more so than the other two, and they're more like you can see them a lot clearer. Um, like why are there? Why is every cop in the friggin' city go under the ground? And their hair doesn't grow whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, and uh, <laughs> no, that yeah. that part made sense. I thought, but. I didn't, because it's like, why are you sending all of them? Like, every, really, every cop, cop in Gotham? Because I, I can address this. Okay. They have nothing better to do. Remember, like, how they sent half right. the police force after that one senator who was missing? They're bored. Good point. And they have to get the money's worth out of these yeah. guys. This so. is the first action they've had in years. <laughs> yeah. I don't, know. I, I don't know. And then I think that's justified. Um, And then... The other, I mean, there's just like it feels. Some of it feels a bit rushed to me, but at the same time, it like flies by, even though it's like two hours and forty five minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like this weird back and forth thing because like it, I mean, it it feels like there's like so much time passes in this short amount of time. But it it feels rushed, but it also doesn't. I don't I don't know. It's weird. That's like a m- weird thing for me. And then the one other thing is like it's a lot of. Again, it's just a lot of like small like not. I don't even know if it's inconsistencies. It's just like little things that could have been handled better, or just been touched up, or like re- had a slight rewrite. Just little things like that throughout the movie um, that would have really just really knocked it out of the park for me. Um, but those are really the only thing I have. We went on to the ending. Um, if, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but the last time that you see Batman in the cockpit, he's got city surroundings. You can see it on the side, and you don't see him anymore. And he does, and you know that first explosion? Mm-hmm. That, to me, that's always been a cover for him getting out. Like, his, like he fixed the autopilot and he, I don't know, shot himself out on a whatever. So. And it's, yeah, so. You definitely live, that's what I'm saying. Cause yeah, like, no, what I if he it's, yeah, it's confirmed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so the thing is, like, and, uh, well, actually, I was going to say, and this one other thing, it was like, little, some of it gets a little too fantastical. I mean, like, it gets a little, it gets more, it's, this is easily, like, the most comic booky out of all three movies. Oh, absolutely. Um, cause it has the big, you know, there's a bomb, we have to stop it in time type of thing, and there's a little more uh, fantasy elements 
into it that I think they don't they're not bad i just think they could have been maybe handled in a slightly different way it's just what i mean with like things be, being rewritten retouched a bit, a bit. what what, but, what fantasy elements like i like i said like just i mean like the way like like i said i love the Catwoman character and i think they handled her well but some of it felt a little um awkward i guess to me it just like clean slate thing yeah yeah stuff like uh, that and then yeah. um uh, the the bat wing, or whatever it's called, the bat the bat that was called. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that was a little. No, I I liked it. It was really cool, but it felt a little too like, I don't want to say magical, but I just it was. Well, he does he does drive around a giant tank, so I don't. Know, I always felt that was pretty legit. Tanks, like that's... tanks are real. Hmm. Tanks are real. Flying tanks are not real. Well, uh, flying uh, things are real. I, I always bought that. I don't know. Whatever. Um, but then, and then the one other thing, I actually remember one thing. Uh, some of the dialogue in this movie is really bad. Mm-hmm. No killing, no gun. <laughs> so good. Yeah, pretty much. Like, uh, okay, but, so the ending. Like, so John Blake, otherwise known as Robin Blake, not sure why he changed his name, but um, he gets a bag. Robin from, is a woman's name. That's true, Robin Scherbatsky. I met your mother. Uh, he gets a bag, follows some coordinates, and goes, to, finds Bruce's cave. And the thing that surprises me the most of anything is how I've heard people say that he's going to be Robin. And not just, like, the random internet dumbasses, but, like, people that whose opinion I respect. It's like, oh, well, I guess he's going to be Robin. I'm going to go be a superhero named Mason. Because that makes sense. <laughs> like, And also, thanks, Bruce, because now... Not only thanks for letting me be Batman, but I also don't have a job, and you didn't leave me any money, so I'm gonna have to completely be self-sufficient and I guess rob banks <laughs> to pay for all this crap that you left me to go fight crime. Thanks. Well, Bruce. that's not his fault. Bruce had no money left. <laughs> exactly, but like still, so <laughs> it's crazy. And it's not like you said, "Hey, you need to be Batman, or I'm gonna come back and find you." Yeah, He's, and it goes like, the, that like whole ending where I mean, he get, he pretty much he gives the. Um, the mantle of Batman to John Blake, like to me, like a lot of this movie, like I said before, like it's more metaphorical. Mm-hmm. A lot of this movie is really like about ideas and things like that, and so like that uh, that just plays into that, where it's more like again the whole anyone can be Batman, and it just I don't know. That to me that that ending worked, um, and I think I thought they set it up well with the kind of relationship they built with Bruce and John Blake. Hmm. So, uh, so before we get into grades, uh, some thoughts on the ending, just overall. It works. It works. Um, Cody? I like it. It doesn't uh, make me mad. I think it's a um, good ending to a... Uh... I think, and also I think, I mean, just overall, like, the way, regardless of whether you think, like, this, it makes sense or whatever, I think the way it's just put together, like, the, the way it's shot and all the way it's edited together with the music that goes along to close it all up, I think that works incredibly well, really just... It cl- to me, it just closes out the trilogy per- really, really strong. Um, so, and you have that great, also the great scene with Alfred and Bruce um, in the restaurant, um, and uh, and that whole Robin thing. Like that, people are like, "Oh, he's, he's got to be Robin." Like that, 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 that means nothing. <laughs> it's probably be Batman. It, it, all it was is just a little wink from Chris Nolan saying. Eh, here you go. He's kind of Robin. He's not really. You're just gonna call him that because you know, fun little thing for you fans. That's all it was. Like people look way too far into that. Yeah, just like everything. <laughs> uh, Cody, any final thoughts? No, I will defend this movie to my dying day. I love watching this movie. Mm-hmm. It's it's a fun movie. It's a good ending to a great trilogy. Yeah. Cool. But honestly, except for Harry Potter. When has a final chapter ever been really, really good? Like, that's... People go into these with way too high of expectations, I feel. Return of the Jedi? Well, no. <laughs> yes. No. I mean, just thinking about it, like... Objectively, Return of the Jedi is not as, as good as a movie as you think it is. No. It's... It's alright. It's a good movie, but... Ewoks suck. Yeah. And... Really... Awesome. Un- unless something is planned from the very beginning, like... Harry Potter or... Uh, Lord of the Rings, I guess, to use a comparison. Let's just all calm down with the third, the quote-unquote awesome third chapter, because it's just never going to be as good. That's just life. So, 
That's my two cents. But, uh, are you guys ready to do grades? Let's think about other movies that have third chapters. Yeah, Back to the Future 3. Not very good. I love Back to the Future 3. War of the Planet of the Apes might, just by Ooh, your that standards. That might be good. Yeah. That's probably going to be the best of the bunch. If that's the last one, I guess. But you never know. Cool. So, grade time. Yeah, Cody. Grade it. Um, eight and a half. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go eight and a half as well. Josh. Nine. Solid nine. Okay. So let's see. I have Cody. You're. I had two eight and a half. Eight and a half. Ten and eight and a half. Yours were what? Did I say nine and a half for Batman Begins? Yes, I think so. Nine and a half. Ten and eight and a half. And then Josh was. Nine and a half. Ten. Nine. Okay, so pretty much a similar ebb and flow for all of us. You know? Basically, I love the movies more than you guys do. So. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it's not to say we don't like these movies, though. By no means. They're great. In a different... Just in different ways. All right, well, that's going to be it. Yeah. For us, it's <laughs> we're, we're past the two-hour mark. I might have to actually edit this thing, but you never know. No, uh, just let it. Just let it. Yeah, I probably should. So you can follow us at underscore RealFlix on Twitter... This is, of course, part two of our retrospective. So part three will be Batman v Superman coming up in, you know, just under a couple months. We're getting soon. We're close, aren't we? Oh, boy. We'll we'll see. (laughs) But uh, next week, Josh, you get Hail Caesar. So I'm sure you're going to be excited about that one. So (laughs) until then, like I said, follow us at underscore RealFlix on Twitter. And may, may the Batman watch over us all. Keep us safe. Six. Hector. <laughs> a silent guardian. A dark I'm Batman. Batman. No, damn it. You're supposed to say it dark. You ruined night, it. Josh. You ruined it. Damn it. All right. End it there. <laughs>